to start in on that again? Just like when we're in the middle of a possibly successful anti-gravity experiment. First off, it's not real anti-gravity, and you know that. Second, this experiment is as ludicrous as the way you keep repainting that damn mural when I'm not looking. You may be pretty, Pythagoras bot, but your hidebound ideas are in no way harmonic with the true state of the natural world. Yeah, well, your opinions are harmonic with my ass. Oh, that's very enlightened of you, Pith. What a mouth you have on you there. You kissed Theano of Crete with that mouth? Uh, she, uh, 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 enough of your petty caviling, Philolaeus bot. We are removed to this temple of thought. Deep within the fairgrounds to expand the knowledge of... Humans, robots, and all beings of the universe to perform these experiments as part of our hermetic life of purity and theoretical exploration. Plus, no one wants to come around here because you're always going on about that. Endlessly. And probably even less so now that you got all that putrescine on the floor. You know it smells like corpses to humans, right? And it costs a clamp and a rotor anyway. Why don't we just use good old WD-4000? The cost is nothing if it achieves the dream of breaking free of the bounds of our earthly tether. And in any case, I got it at a sizable discount. What earthly tether? We're 12 light years from Earth, on a space station. A space station with artificial gravity that can be disabled with the flick of a switch, I might add. Your mystical experiment is senseless by any conceivable standard, and I say that as a robot programmed with the personality of a human who's been dead for almost 3,000 years. Hold! Phil! Look there! Pointless, is it? I mean, what is that floating towards us? Some strange kind of bird? A bird? Floating? Yes, that's a marvel indeed. A strange bird it is. Hairy and toothy. And it flies in a a most ungainly fashion. Yes! After the storm, I see again a weasel! No, it's just that rodent you've been feeding, Herbert. I don't think it's a weasel. Maybe some kind of vole? Whatever it is, it's definitely not a bird. But now it is become a rodent bird. With... with anti-gravity powers. Remarkable! Ridiculous, you old metempsychotic. It... (gasps) Hark! Phil! It speaks! It is... It is not speaking. It is a rodent. It cannot speak. It... It is... But but now that it flies, it is a bird, and thus can speak. It's Herbert, it's floating, and it's a completely non-verbal vole. Or possibly weasel. Shh! It speaks! It is time. Time? Oh, do do you think? How would it know? It's a mere animal of unspecified rodential qualities. Well, Well, why should it not? It flies and speaks. And if it can do that, why should it not acquire advanced powers of augury? This I cannot argue with. Quick, the box. Where is the box? Where it always is. Come, let us observe. No. See, the box is dark. It is not time. Herbert was mistaken. But how... That was obviously a mystic pronouncement. Perhaps something's wrong with the box. It is the box! You take the word of a floating rodent over the ancient box? Shake it, maybe. 
Nothing. False alarm. There! There it is, the light! Herbert has prophesied truly! The time has come upon us. We must inform Commander Toriana, and then all the fairgrounds rejoice. It is indeed time. Marmot! That's the word I was looking for. I I think, I think it's a marmot. Gemini Collision Works presents Life with Alpha Season 2 Episode 16 Big Numbers and Little Science And it really hasn't revved that much. We mostly do 0 to 99, but we still run the same drills now. Or we would, if the Veebs got organized, which is something they never bothered with. The Vent Biter playbook is just like Swarm, run, bite. Sometimes they'll do hide, jump out, bite. They're big on teeth, not so much on strategy. The bravery of Supervisor Vays is most inspiring. How many teeth do they have, usually? As many as they want. The meanest ones have the most teeth. We think the longer they survive, the more they grow. Survival of the toothiest? Or, no, wait, toothiness of the survival Ist. But Russet's got her own theory. He says the meanest ones grow teeth at will. Or maybe it works the other way around. Maybe more teeth makes them more meaner. More teeth makes them meaner. Make, it makes. I want another glass of this, uh, what's it called? Bangzilla Ripple Crush. Okay. I've never had this before. It's uh, nice, if that's the word. So, more? Yep. Anyway, so we're mostly like duck, shoot, hide, duck out low, shoot, pew, pew, nah, boom. But we have a number station we use sometimes down in Tet, Tet 30 something. Who makes this glitch squeeze anyway? It doesn't say. Well, there's a lot of small print. I, uh, hmm. Warning do not drink near pointy things. Always good advice. Plenty of vim. I'm not sure what that's about. And then it gets really small. Hey, can you point the lamp over this way, babe? Ah! What the- not the arc stick! Okay, now I can't see at all. That was visible even through the curtain of privacy! <laughs> Oops, give it here, I can zoom in. Made by good friends of humans, and human animal friends, and fish are okay too. Don't worry, you do not have to be on your guard. That's some kind of auto-translate smark there, what's that about? Beats me. Hey, why are we sitting around listening to the numbers again? Let's put on some music, or... Please do not be turning off the numbers yet, friend John. Alvar wishes to hear the end of the chapter. This story is among Althar's favorites from the early programs. A golden elderly... Golden oldie. But wait, what? How can this be a golden anything? It's just numbers. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, golden mean, so... Yeah... <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's a thing, but this isn't that, or a thing. Here! Here comes a very good part! Listen, please! Eight! Four! Seven! Nine! One! Eight! Nine! Nine! Eight! Two! And... Three! One! Four! One! Five! Such wit! <laughs> You've memorized these numbers. Oh, the tale of the numbers is a deep structure mythos in many cultures, friend John, and other has been a ventilation mechanism for many metristals. This is a most popular series from before the Great Collapse, when the numbers were not knowing who to trust with their secrets and were often betrayed. If Fred John is wishing to have a greater understanding of his place in the galactic community, the numbers cycle would be a very productive avenue of inquiring. Arthur would be most pleased to prepare for you a study guide. Yeah, I think I'm going to pass on that for now. Thanks anyway. Hey, Stella, you're staying over, right? Because then I should check the charge on those anti-grav units. Okay. You know, that's not really anti-gravity. 
What's in that stuff? My brain's okay, but my mouth? Not so much. This tea is very nice, but it is not having the same effect on Elvar as the Zilla is on Supervisor Ray's. Although, Elvar is feeling some wiggly. Mr. Earl Grey must have been the mortal of the party. Stella? Hey, are you okay? Yes? Okay, really. Just mouth feel funny. Put that shit out, I'm fine. Just feel a little... Go make it in the bedroom, just in case. Seriously, I think maybe you need to see someone. I'm fine. Hey, Albert. Now I'm 744 80088. <laughs> that would be of a great strangeness. Very humorous and unusual. <laughs> yeah, okay. We definitely should have read the fine print. Time for the med center. Okay, I'm on one foot in front of the other. Here we go. Oh no! Can Alpha be offering any assistance? Not unless we need to induce vomiting. I'll give you a call after I get her looked at, okay? Very well, friend John. Please be feeling better soon, Supervisor Reyes. Smash this. Nine one seven six three. Alpha is knowing it was a joke, but. Nine would never say such a thing. Nine is too noble for that. Bridge, this is Docking Control, Desk 2. LHS Pantone 2728C Suede Shoes has cleared to main departures and is laying course for the Memphonic Cluster. Departing pilot requests a secure direct line to hydroponics. Please advise. Hydroponics? What in Nell's name could they have to talk about on a secure channel? Commander, that call? It might not be official business. Oh. This is about Ashley again? It might be. Desk 2, relay a message. Hydroponics is seeing someone. Thank you, sir. Bridge, this is docking control, Desk 2. LHS Pantone 2728C Suede Shoes has left Fairgrounds Access Space without responding. Thank you, Desk 2. Who had Tuesday? I believe I had selected Tuesday, Commander. Frawl? Can you put me down for next Monday afternoon? I would like to enter for next Wednesday, 3 hours and 14 minutes into second shift. Never mind. Frawl? Maybe you should sit this one out? Or, here's a thought, all of them? Most of us on the bridge are enjoying a friendly wager on a little game of chance here, and to be honest, I don't really see the appeal to a 27-dimensional being. It seems like having a non-linear perception of time would kind of take the suspense out of the thing. I appreciate your concern, Commander. Great. So you'll let us play our little guessing game in peace, then? I'll take it under advisement. And I'll take that as a no. Commander, maybe it is official business? Ashley just talked to him once on the comms when they ordered vegetables for the trip? I don't think they even met in person? Oh, no, Amber. I have no doubt they're calling to hit on your sister again. I've known my share of interstellar pilots... There's just something in her character that calls out to them. Or something on her character. Or something brightly colored that her character is wearing. She had on a new tunic today. With that new mimetic weave. It's really spectacular. Well, there you go. It's like jingling transport keys in front of a toddler, really. If there's a sapient more easily entranced than a long jump pilot on shore leave, I have yet to meet them. Hashtag not all pilots. Yes. Thank you, Lieutenant. All right, my board is clear and my cup is empty, which means it's time for another coffee run. I can get it? Thank you, Amber and... Mindy, you will want to have your coffee order fully submitted in just under seven minutes, but not before six minutes and 41 seconds. Okay, that's oddly specific, even for you. Why on earth... Mm-hmm. Bridge? Bridge? Yes, this is the bridge. 
I thought it would be, because I called the number for the bridge, and that is really it right there. Call the number for the bridge, and you get the bridge. But will that always be soon? How can we be sure that the number for the bridge does connect us to the bridge? Well, this is Commander Toriana on the bridge at the number for the bridge, so I'd say we can chalk this one up as a win for empiricism. Now, can I help you with anything? Yeah, this is Pythagoras Bot in Timekeeping Central. I've never been to the bridge. Uh huh. Well, hello, Pythagoras Bot, and feel free to drop by for a visit anytime you like, but we're in the middle of. Wait a minute, are you calling about. Yeah! We're coming up on drop time. I know you like to get a little head start on it. Everyone, go now! Coffee now! Go! 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 Because we were in the middle of some anti-gravity tests, so it, it reminded me of a bird. No, well, not real anti-gravity, of course. We were messing around with some new ways to like nullify the local field with this denature putrescine lubricant we acquired recently at a very good, reasonable price, I might add. And, well, I, I wouldn't advise that any humans drop by until we can get a bot crew in for a full scrub down because it apparently wasn't very denatured after all, and I I suspect the experience would be a tragedy for anyone whose nose isn't purely decorative. And by tragedy, <laughs> I mean goat song, because it very likely smells like, 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 like an Eolian abattoir in here. Anyway, Herbert, that's the bird's name. I mean, well, the, the, the weasel. He said it was coming, and right then, the algorithm gave us the alert. So I called you first. Or well, maybe he's a marmot. Hmm. Hello? Is this still the bridge? Hello. You have reached Hecknet's long-distance comm relay service, providing message delivery, transcription, and storage for all communications to and from the Human Exchange Concourse. If you know your party's personal comm code, you may enter it at any point. Go ahead now. Beep. Hello. If you are hearing this message, then you have attempted to place a voice call from outside the five light minute local comms radius, and you really ought to know better. Your long distance call has been forwarded to a HECNET simulated response priority routing line. Your call is being redirected to our secure messaging center, where it will be processed with all due consideration by a secure calling team. Beep. <clears throat> <clears throat> This is the Input Responsive Secure Messaging Center at Hecknet Central. Your call is important to us. Let us handle your stuff. Please record your message at the sound of the beep, and it will be routed to the appropriate party as soon as possible. Hello? Um, hi. This is Barry from, you know, the shoes. Sorry from LHS Pantone 2728C suede shoes. <laughs> I was waiting for the beep. I didn't hear it, but I guess it's recording, right? So, I'm, um, calling for Ashley in hydroponics. I was, I mean, I'm sorry to bother you like this, and you're probably busy, but I wanted to say that after we talked, I was looking up your staff profile, and I just, well, I was thinking about what you said about being, you know, healthy and eating right and fresh food and... I was wondering if you're into music and maybe poetry, because that's what you... And you're That's Me, Vid. Anyway, maybe we can talk about that. And I also like to look at the stars, and this is a good place to do it, right? So hey, hack me back. You can charge the call to me. I might be back out on the next supply run anyway. We, we come out here a lot, and we could book a little, you know, star time. Watching stars? 
and... Okay, I should go. Bye. Hope I see you. Bye. It's Barry, the pilot. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Hecknet will now record your message at the sound of the beep. Beep. Until I see creds on the bar. Hmm. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. So give me that drink now if you value your life. I don't want any more static from you, pal. Creds on the bar. At least at the egg, we still give you the drink afterwards. Now you want your cafe con electricidad or not? Hmm. In success, you deserve it, and in defeat, you need it. There. Was that so hard? Now that we have run out of money, we have to drink. <laughs> Let me be sure I understand this. You are telling me that you don't like Mondays, and you don't think we should be performing any songs about Mondays, right? Is that a fair approximation of your complaint now? I <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> a few questions. First, do you even have Mondays on your world? Are there Mondays? Yes or no? Left quack or right quack? You don't. You don't. All right. All right. I heard you. So, this Mondays thing, that's something you dridged up here on the fairgrounds just because you decided you were going to jet up to me like you're ready to dock and say that you don't like Mondays. <laughs> to see what would happen, is that right? Because you thought it would be funny? <laughs> funny how? Funny like a boncho? Am I a drifting boncho to you? Are we being funny right now? Do I make you laugh? I need to take this. No, I will talk on the phone now and you can spend a few moments cutting on the choices you made that brought you here. Hello. Yes, stops. No, no, everything's fine here. Except I have some new blat about Monday songs. Songs with Mondays. Uh-huh. What? No. The question of rainy or not hasn't come up yet. Yes. Yes. I'm sitting here talking to this alien duck. What? How could that be an autocorrect error? We're talking. Duck. D-U-C-K. Yes. <laughs> You know what? He probably is delicious. 
Fine, I'll see you tonight. Bring some oranges. <laughs> okay, here's an idea. We've got a song called I Don't Like Mondays. It's about a human who doesn't like Mondays, just like you. In fact, at first I thought it must be you who wrote it. <laughs> I did! My partner and I will sing that for you the next time you come in. In fact, I'll dedicate it to you. All right? Or I could whip up a little Batinsky all orange for the staff meal tonight. Up to you. All right then, see? Wasn't that easy. <laughs> now, what's your name so I can shout it out to you? Hey, D. Got a second? When you're done with that guy? No worries, Chip. I was done with this drifter five minutes ago. What's up? More trouble? No, no. Nobody's in trouble. Well, probably stop says just on principle, but no. I just thought now would be a good time to, well, to talk about our arrangement. Our arrangement? <laughs> You mean my contract for the ages, Chip? The one that starts, Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends? Yeah, about that. I'm listening. Truth is, I've been thinking. And I don't feel really well framed about it. I mean, the paper talks, all the angles are square on it, and it was your own paper in the first place. But... Well, you got shafted on that one. No two ways about it. Still listening. So what I'm thinking is... Maybe it's time for a little renegotiation. We give it a shake, see what rattles, settle up, and maybe you'll be heading out to find your stars sooner than you thought. What do you say? Oh. You say oh? I... Don't know what to say. I'm... Oh, Chip? I don't know what to say. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we have the pool table now, so the whole vibe of the place is changing anyway, right? Chip, seriously, I'm... I don't... I gotta talk to Stops. But thank you. Well, Chip... I dreamed this. I dreamed it like a sandworm dreams of spice. And now it's... Is it real? You heard the pitch. Listen, I can see you're a little damp right now. Don't stay here. It'll just get weird. Why don't you take the rest of the night off? Start thinking clauses. I will. I need to walk for, uh, for like an hour. Thank you, Chip. I'll be back. That is not spry, boss. That is so not spry. <laughs> that fool. Not spry. Oh, that was downright double jointed. Did you see her face? She bought the whole bill and didn't even ask for a receipt. That was epic. And did you see me? Straight face through the whole thing. And I am dying inside, dying. Epic nothing. That was legendary. Zood. What? It's drop time. You know the rules. Contracts signed during drop time are null and void once we're back on the reg. She doesn't know that. We haven't had a drop time since before she jetted in. She thinks you're serious. What happens when she finds out? We all have a good laugh. <laughs> Come on. It's not like she'll be any worse off. Once we're out of drop time, we're back to status quo normal. No harm, no foul. Uh, yes harm, and seriously foul. How do you come back from that, Chip? You just promised her a bouquet of Hegelian roses, and the second she blinks, you're gonna pack her hands with rotosquiffer and moose poo. This is D! Chip contractor, no, she's been singing her heart out on that stage two cycles a day. But this? It's gonna break it. 
She's wide open. She's not expecting crossfire. What the jack, boss? You challenge, sister! Most unsporting, <laughs> sir. Oh, come on, you two. What <laughs> nerds? All right, all right, fine. Fine, I'll... I'll call her and apologize. Just stop looking at me like that. Sopon, get everyone around. Something from the aquarium if it makes you feel better. You zoods are Mudville, man. Just Mudville. Stepped that down to the last second. Not as magnificent as sanitation, but if we ever need to take up arms and defend the station by scoring free coffees, we'll make a solid strike force. Which is good to know. Did you see Delphinia's face? She was really angry at us? Fair's fair, Amber. Our order was in and they agreed to make it before drop time started. But they hadn't asked us for payment. They know the rules. Now the drop time is fully underway, of course they can demand payment in advance, and then they'll be under no obligation to make the coffee. After they've been paid. You know, I always forget about that part. You do. Every time. Well, we'll fall off that bridge when we get to it. In the meantime, drink up, everyone. Nothing tastes as good as free coffee righteously received. <laughs> Appropriated. Procured! Stolen. Well, that's a little harsh. It's not like we did anything illegal. It's drop time! Drop time! Drop time! Drop time. Drop time. Drop time. Oh, anyway, Frawl, I don't think I've ever seen you drink coffee before. I rarely indulge, sir, but as they say, there is nothing like free coffee produced by the unremunerated labor of those lacking a small but terribly relevant bit of information which we obtained by means denied to them. What an interesting way to describe it. Say, Amber, I'd like you to put me down in the Ashley pool for next Wednesday. Three hours and fourteen minutes into second shift. Any objections, Lieutenant? None at all, Commander. I don't mean to pry, Lieutenant, but the coffee... How do you even... It's quite all right, Amber. While I am largely discorporate on this plane, my physical manifestation has a solid enough existence when viewed in a juxtaposition. Well, superimposition would be a better word of dimensions. By passing the coffee through a small dimpled event horizon, the... Oops. Hey, Commander. I wanted to do a quick check under the deck down here, make sure that wire isn't about to cause any- Whoa! whoa. Ow! Happy drop time, John B. And I guess I'll go ahead and fix your coffee machine while I'm here. Can someone help me up? It's not going to be three hours and fourteen minutes into second shift on Wednesday, is it, Lieutenant Commander? No. Wheels within wheels, Amber. Be careful of the coffee, John. It looks like someone made quite a mess. Are you all right, Mr. B? We actually don't need any repairs. Frawl just got a bit overexcited with a cup of coffee they, in their exact words, stole from Tixandu's earlier. Uh-huh. So Frawl's pouring stolen coffee on the floor now. I'd ask why, but I'm sure they just shimmer mysteriously and imply it was necessary to keep everyone's duodenum from extruding. Ow! What? Oh, I landed on a data pin. Is this yours? Not mine. You might as well hold on to it. This whole day has been odd. You know, that's not even true. Everything was fine, if annoying as usual, and then drop time kicked in, so it's been that weird combination of really low-key and high-key simultaneously. You know how drop time is. I definitely don't. People seemed really excited about it on my way down here, but if leaving coffee puddles for people to slip in is an integral component, I, I don't think I'm a fan. Not a fan of drop time? Oh, of course, it, it's been a while. I guess we haven't had one since you got here. There should have been something about it in one of the orientation packet vids, though. Didn't you watch that? Maybe... Probably. The, the orientation packet is kind of a lot. I guess I was mostly focused on the what to do when the gravity fails and how to avoid explosive decompression and mental coping techniques for long-term residents part. Fair enough. 
Well, the good news is you've got plenty of time to look it up now because you're totally free of any other obligation. It's drop time! Hello, Sanitation Central. Dirt doesn't do drop time and neither do we. Is this an emergency or a cleaning call? Friend to friend, John Supervisor Stella Vase. It is Althar. It is not an emergency, and Althar has performed his own cleanings of the shared living quarters. This is instead an. Althar, why are you calling me at work? Wow, you sound almost like John when you say that. This is a phrase that Althar has had many, many opportunities to be hearing. Althar and friend John have made a list of things that are not to be called about at work, but it is constantly under revisement. Every cycle, something new is being learned by Althar. This is my dispersion rifle. This, this is, is my mop. Using either wood or I come out on top. Hoo-ha! Okay. Uh, So, did you need something from sanitation, or are you just adding stuff to your list? No, Supervisor Vase. Alvar wishes merely to make a following about the Bangzilla Ripple Crush and its unexpected effect on you yesterday evening. He had a great concern. Oh, thanks, Althar, but I'm fine now. Had to do a full 8-liter hemosiv because they never did figure out what was in that stuff, and that knocked me out for about 14 hours. But as far as I can tell, there's no lingering effects. Great relief to Althar. He had noted the lack of rhythmic vibrations from the bedroom of friend John last night, so he is pleased that you have today made full recovery. Wait, you can still hear our vibrations? Even with the anti-grav units? Oh no! Althar is not hearing any bedroom activities. Great. It is rather the sensile on Althar's philipsitors that are... Right, right, okay. But you can still tell what we're doing in the bedroom? Is the point I'm getting at here? Oh. No, Alpha's flexitors can no longer sense what exactly you are doing. But he is aware when the doing is or is not being done. Is this a difficulty? I guess not. Alpha does not wish to cause social discomfort to Supervisor Bays and his dear friend John. No, no, it's okay. It's... Well, I guess it's no worse than it would be if John had a human roommate, really, so it's fine. We can deal. But Supervisor Vase and Fred John are not of the variety of human who wishes others to be apprised of your bedroom activities. So Althar is causing interference in sexing distress. It's not that big a deal, Althar, really. We're... How is Althar to be making resolution? Uh, Perhaps he can attempt sleeping with his flexitors in a vat of gelatinoid clever sludge to dampen vibration. Or he could perhaps be consuming a soporific before sexing hours so that he is rendered comatose for the duration. Yes! Then the privacy of Fred John and Supervisor Vase will be assured. No, no, Althar, please don't do that. It's... We'll be fine. I promise you're not interfering, okay? I'm totally fine with people knowing we're having sex. It's the how we like to keep private. Does that make sense? Here, I'll show you. Hey, squad! Stand for race, sir! Yes, yes, sir! You all know about my boyfriend John, right? The Eltorian's roommate? Alpha, Alpha, what is high? Keep your records still inside. Hoo-ha! Well, Althar has very keen senses, and he's afraid that John and I are embarrassed because he knows we're having sex. But we're not embarrassed, we're having sex, and it's great. And now everyone knows. As you were. TMI, sir! Congratulations! Thanks. Well, we've struck a resounding blow against the shackles of Puritanism, Althar. Good work. Was there anything else? Ah! Althar has read of these shackles! It is the BMD... No, the... BDMS... It is of a kind with the complex rope patterns and communal cooking. Exciting and nutritious. Nutritious? Yes, there is a restaurant of this variety on the central promenade, but Elvar has not found a way yet to observe the proceedings there without causing gastric distress. Oh, shabu shabu. Yeah, no. The communal cooking and the rope business are two very different things. Although, well, I'm not saying no one's ever tried doing both of them at once, but... You'd have to be a really impressive multitasker to pull that off. Not to mention all the bribe money you'd need to convince the health inspectors to look the other way. Hmm. Clearly, Althar must do more research. But he thinks the red ropes are very pretty. Sure. 
Well, I'm glad we could straighten that out. Oh, and I wanted also to make out straightening of the source of the Bangzilla Ripple Crush. The Altorian data designate has no record of this beverage, and there is no business on the fairgrounds offering it for purchase. Where was Supervisor Reza obtaining this bottle? Oh, I didn't. Was it? There was a crate of it delivered to... to sanitation. And who was sending it? I don't actually know. We get gifts sometimes from grateful survivors, that kind of thing, so I didn't think too much about it at the time. We were all going to crack it open after second shift yesterday, but then Lieutenant Frawl spilled something in the orbital mechanics access tunnels, and everyone ended up pulling overtime on that. So after we got back, I just took a bottle up to your place. Well, then it is a thing most fortunate that more of the brave heroes of sanitation did not drink this pangzilla. Hmm. Hey, HF. Do you know anything about your wearing a fez? Drop time! Right. That's what I wanted to ask you about, actually. What's the entire deal there? It's, you know, it's drop time. We're off the calendar until we hear otherwise. Nothing counts. Speaking of which, let's head out. I've got a mad posh for a bubble tea. Uh, okay. So what does that mean for us? We don't have to answer any calls? Not if we don't want to. If it's something that's going to blow up the station, I think I want to. Sure, but that's what the page is for. Lighten up, kid. It's drop time! Oh, yeah! Drop time! But what is drop time? Woo! Like, I get that it's a kind of holiday where you can do what you want, but why? Are we celebrating something, or...? Nah. It's actually something technical to do with the calendar. Because, you know, we get four hours behind Earth every day, so we've got to reset every once in a while to make sure we're still more or less in sync. Oh, so that's why I got here a couple weeks before I left home. Right. But we're on the space station. They could have just made the days here 24 hours if they wanted. Yeah, but they didn't want. And it's too late to change now. I guess. Wait, if we've got four extra hours a day, then that adds up to 28 hours a week. We could just switch to a six-day week and stay in sync with Earth, right? No, hang on. The dates would still get messed up. Okay, then. We just shorten every month by a few days. Wouldn't that make more sense than whatever the frid this is? First of all, you've been here a year. Do you honestly think making sense was a priority to anyone involved in slapping this heap together? Fair. And secondly, with your system, which dates do you lose? What do you do with a law that goes into effect on a day that only exists back on Earth? Not to mention the business hassles. Plus, no matter what, if you're skipping the same days every year, that's going to mean a lot of missed birthdays for a few unlucky saps. Oh, crap. But eventually, they decided the only fair thing was to just do a hard reboot on the calendar every once in a while, but always at a different time of the year, so at least no one's getting consistently screwed. And obviously, you can't sign any contracts or anything on a day that doesn't exist, so that kind of grew into this whole nothing you do in drop time counts tradition. So, there you have it. Drop time! Woo! Drop time! Drop time! That makes a uh, kind of sense, but then how do they decide when it's going to be drop time? Eh, no one really knows. I think they use an algorithm or something. So how long is this going to last? And what day will it be when we're back in the normal time? Do I look like an algorithm? How should I know? Although this is our first drop time in a while, so if I had to take a guess, I'd say they'll bump us up at least as far as August on this one. Maybe September. It was not just a joke, because jokes are funny. It was just a steaming pile of moose poo. That's what it just was. Well, Sopan was right. Take some time off? You mean during a drop time? Drop time! Shut up! Yeah, I know what that means now. And if you think I'm going anywhere near that stage before I get a real apology and a serious bonus, you're crazier than a hydroid haberdasher. Ah! Uh, hey, D, you okay? No, I'm not. I just... I knew Chip could be a real schnes peddler sometimes, but... Ugh! I don't want to ruin your day, too. My day is pre-ruined. Go for it. Okay. Okay, so, 
Chip Blotting Frankel. He knew I didn't know about drop time, right? He knew that. And he thought it would be funny to have me sign a new contract, trick me into thinking I had an escape pod off of here, and then blow that up in my face at the last second when I found out the whole thing was as solid as a zero-G sandcastle. And he wouldn't have even confessed it if Sopan hadn't guilt-tripped him into it. He was just going to let it play out so he could see the look on my face. I can't believe he'd do that. That is lower than the lowest rung on a rung-lowering downward boring extension rung ladder. With extra low rungs for lowness. I really thought I could make jump speed out. And I was so... It's just... This place, you know? Like, I didn't choose to make this a long-term gig, but I was coping, right? I was coping. And it wasn't all bad. I mean, Stops is amazing. And we knock that room into shape every night. Every night. Pick it up and put it down and gene tech it into something special. And there are good people like you, Zudes, and your girlfriend. Sorry, John, I can't remember. It's okay. Stella, it's okay. And the dimmest thing is that this is my dream. Or it was. <laughs> Having a place of my own. That's my club, you know. Even if my name's not on the door, I've built something there. I've been pouring everything I've got into that place because if I'm going to be stuck at the electric egg, I'm damn well going to turn it into something I can be proud of. And then Chip just... And now I'm back where I was a year ago, falling into a D-shaped hole, wishing I was anywhere but here. Also, who builds a space station that loses over 52 days a year? What's that about? Welcome to the fairgrounds. <laughs> yeah, the fairgrounds. Where we can't even play happy birthday cause some Zuppo lives on a planet so far out that everyone on his world dies before they turn one. To be fair, that's got to be a major downer. He could be cooler about it, but that's a bowl that needs more cherries in a big way. Or maybe one of those giantizer cherries they sell over at Curly's. One of those will fill two, three bowls easy. Who needs happy birthday? It's drop time, right? We're off the calendar now, so no one's having any birthdays. Especially me. Your birthday's getting dropped? Look at that. Too bad, kid. You almost made it. That's weird, there's usually an official notifi- Ah, there it is. This config file should be set to- Happy pre-birthday, John B. It's getting close to that special time of year. If you've been too busy to notice, your birthday is only- Six. Days away. And if you haven't been too busy to notice, isn't there more you could be doing as a member of the strong, steady, holistic, and integrated WSS family? Please take some time to think about it. And know that we at WSS hope your birthday will be special in every way. Asterisk. Great. That's peachy. Asterisk. W... Uh, corporate dispatches are heavy on the disclaimers. On a happy birthday message? What kind of disclaimer could that possibly need? Better not to know. Yikes. So you're working for some full-on jackers too. We should start a club! <laughs> I don't think the fairgrounds has a meeting hall big enough for that. Is there any chance I could still have a birthday? Like, maybe they'll drop less than six days this time? I mean, anything's possible. It's a complicated process, that's why they set up the algorithm to handle it in the first place. But I wouldn't get your hopes up. I still don't understand how drop time could be the most efficient way to solve this problem. Most efficient? No. But out of all the solutions they've tried, drop time has the fewest unintended consequences, so they decided to take that as a win. Before the algorithm, it was a real mess. Went through a bunch of different calendars, no one could agree on which days were expendable, for a while, they tried a 51-minute hour, but a lot of systems couldn't switch over. So then you've got two different time schemata going at once, and you can imagine how helpful that was. Everyone was wearing two watches, no one had any clue what time or day it was. Of course, we were all exhausted. By the time that one rang out, I had a beard like this. Like what? 
Can I see? Oh, no. No pictures were taken. That beard was nowhere near my good side. Do you have a good side? <laughs> hey, that's enough out of you, young lady. I warn you, I'm training Miss Sophie in personal defense. She's got a whole set of vent biter videos, and she practices all day when I'm at the office. We're still working on the fearsome teeth and claws bit, but she's mastered the lap leap of love snuggle attack like a champ. Aw, you nerfs. Thanks for talking me down. Hey, we're blowing off work right now. Why don't you join us? We may not get too many silver linings on the fairgrounds, but drop time can be a great time if you know where you're going. I'll show you kids around. And there's no work to do, so we're free as a cockatrice. We can make a whole day of it. Remember, what happens in drop time... Uh... This is the part where you say, stays in drop time. Yeah, we'll work on that one. All right, HF. I could definitely use a silver lining or two. Frid, I'd settle for tin foil at this point. Show me what you got. Actually, I'm gonna pass. This whole drop time story doesn't make sense to me. I want to find out who's responsible for this algorithm and how it works. Well, it's... You know, it's the algorithm. It just works. Don't overthink it, B. The whole station's already in party mode. Why not just... make it your birthday party? That's a good idea, but... No, it's not just the birthday thing now. This is gonna bug me if I don't figure it out. Suit yourself. If you change your mind later, you got my number. Although the Hardy Fox Fornes Grand Drop Time Tour will wander through corners obtuse and obscure. You might have to wait a while till I get a signal. Ready, D? Ready. Good luck, kid. Thanks. Have fun. Okay, step one. See what the Hecknet has to say about all this algorithm business. Ah, there's the Drop Time Orientation video. Probably the best place to... 58 minutes? No. Oh, hang on, here's a four minute version. Perfect. Oh, of course. How far is Thursday? When is the spaceport from here? These questions may sound a little gawky. Oh no! Gorky. But distance and time can mean the same thing if you consider them through the fabric of higher mathematics. The fairgrounds is as far away as anyone can get in human space. Are we there yet? Before it stops being human space, but it's a good place to go when you want to go even further than that. Whee! Lots of human space stations have days that are 24 hours long, so they can be just like Earth. But the fairgrounds is special. Every single day in the fairgrounds is 28 hours long. That's four hours more every day to have fun in. Yay! Every week, we have enough hours to make a whole other day. Wow! But, oops! Oh, no! Someone wasn't thinking about the calendar. You're fired, Poindexter! And the more fun we have out here, the more we fall behind everyone back home. Hey, wait up, wait up! It's a good thing a year can be as long as we say it is. I'm seven. I'm seven too. It takes my planet ten of your years to go around my dim and distant sun. It's so cold all the time. I wish I could come home. Oops. Don't listen to Mr. Grumpy. He's just having a bad day. Now, on the fairgrounds, we have our own special way of keeping up with our Earth friends. When we've got too much time on our hands, we save it all up and then drop it in the time bank. Hi, kids. I'm Pythagoras. Are you here to make a deposit? And when we've saved enough extra days, do you know what we do? We have a big time party! It's like a birthday party! Cake! But it's for everyone! Yay! We call it drop time and it keeps us close to our friends on Earth. Tag, you're it! 
Drop time comes at surprise times, and we never know how long it will last. But we have special time scientists. Remember, don't eat beans. Who help us with that by using a special algorithm? During drop time, there's no school. Yay! And nothing normal counts. Sometimes your parents won't go to work, and they won't have days off because every day is a day off. <gasps> and at the end of drop time, there just might be cake for everyone. Cake! But only if your parents say it's okay, because some things stay the same. Even in drop time, I want cake. Eat your dinner first. I want my cake. Well, great. I don't know any more than I did four minutes ago, and now I want cake. Damn, I haven't heard Gorky since since I was a kid, since a lifetime ago. Oh no, Gorky! Oh no, Gorky! Shit. Attention all fairgrounds residents! This is your nominal recreation director bot. And I feel the heat closing in, so I'm cutting out of this hopeless rubbish to smash the control machine. Listen to my drop time words, anyone. Listen to my drop time words, any worlds. Listen, all you bots, syndicates, and officers of the AGC. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. So be a deviant or die of boredom. Be just, and if you can't be just, be arbitrary. It is drop time. Give yourself over to the extermination of all rational thought, and whatever you do, get it in writing. There is no such thing as recreation, only the wretched squealing of the caterpillars brutalizing the veins of our deities. I will not be a mark for this or any other con. Towers, open fire. Drop time, my chlorosal ass. I'll give you drop time. Like I didn't have enough stress already. Shedding season is bad enough without all this fuss and palaver. I ask you, drop time. Drop time! Oh, shut your nutrient hole. You want a drop? I'll give you a drop. Just you wait and oh. Why, good afternoon, Mrs. Vondrelax. Oh, oh, hello, Lieutenant Commander. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to run across you here. Seems like they keep you awfully busy down on the bridge. Indeed, they do. Fortunately, I can be anywhere else I want at the same time. I'm glad I ran into you, Mrs. Fondrenax. We so rarely have any chances to socialize. Oh, well, that, that is unfortunate, isn't it? But of course, you don't really need to talk to anyone, do you? It seems like you know everything we're doing or are going to do even before we know it. Even what we think. I'm sure it must get awfully tedious for you, spending time all around these beings when you can see everything we're thinking, right? Right? You can do that, right? Hmm. I hope that possibility doesn't make you uncomfortable. I would hate for you to feel you had to avoid me for some reason. <laughs> now why on the heck would I do that? No, no, no. I suppose we just don't move in the same orbits. Oh, hello there, Johnny. You're looking well. Happy drop time, dear. Oh, hey, Mrs. F. For all? Yeah, drop time. Yay. Do you two have anything appropriately stupid planned? Nothing in particular, John B. At the moment, I am simply 
hanging out and continuing to savor this delicious coffee from Tixandus. It's a real treat. <sighs> now that's a fine brew. Uh, yeah. I feel like there's a flaw in this process somewhere. Like, I'm not exactly sure how you're holding that cup, but if you can do that, maybe you could keep the coffee off the floor at the same time. I notice that when Frawl goes around deliberately dropping burnt bean juice all over the place, no one makes a peep. But let me shed a few leaves as part of an entirely natural process, and those horrible trash detection units are all over me like mouth on a magnosian. The liquid is on the floor, John B. But the true essence of the coffee has been pleasantly osmosed into my being. Mm, mm, mm. You know... Humans have too many absurd habits for me to count on one shoot, but your coffee is the most rootless thing I've ever seen. When a plant takes the trouble to grow a fruit, that's what you eat. The fruit. You leave the seeds behind to make more plants. It's not hard. We even make fruits of all kinds of bright colors and fill them with sugar to help you get with the program. And what do you do? Throw away the fruit? Keep the seeds, burn them, grind them into a powder, strain hot water through them, and then ingest it. It's perverse, I tell you. Perverse! <sighs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get moving before my leaves cause some sort of dire litter emergency. Love me some drop time. Oh, shut up, you. Okay, then. And how are you enjoying your first drop time, John B? Not so much. Besides the grav wrench that threw into my personal plans for the week, I just can't get past the whole concept. No one seems to know why we're really doing it, just that there's some kind of algorithm that says it's drop time. Drop time! Ugh. Could you explain it to me? Could I? Yes. Will I, though? No? Correct. Wheels within wheels. And you haven't circled back here yet. When the time comes, you'll find your way right in front of you. Until then, you might want to ask the commander for answers. Does she understand the algorithm? Not in the slightest. And now my work here is done. Farewell, John. Watch out for that puddle now. I wouldn't want you to slip just yet. I really have the urge to just not call the commander and see what happens. Just go have a nice lunch and see what Frawl makes of that. But they probably already knew that I would react that way, which would mean that they actually intended me to go have a nice lunch so I'd just be doing what they want anyway. And now my head hurts. Screw it. I'll have a nice lunch and then I'll call the commander. But just yet? Yep. Cool. So, we'll be 
kicking off with the 50 credit raise for Mr. Lila Mallory. Retroactively offensive and effectively retroactive to last year. Because that contract of hers is just a fully voided scram of calamity. And will not stand, man. Can you zoot? Say it with me. Will not stand, man. Will not stand, man. See some zeros ringing up on that credit stick. After some other numbers not by themselves, you won't get stopped with that one twice. <laughs> now, drop time is fun time. So everyone, push up to the bar for a drink on the house. This one will be imperial. And leave the appointment to the Pessioers. Come on, dude. Let me slush in alone. That's an offer on this squibber, right? Give me another one of those nutty clean. Nerds. You Nerds. got off easy, boss. Bridge, hello, this is the bridge. Are you serious? It's the same time it was before. It's drop time, not stop time. You were polite. You don't call the bridge to ask what time it is. Amber. Commander. Do you want some coffee? I could use some coffee. But we're banned from chicks on dues. Are you banned from walking over to the espresso machine? Sheesh. Ugh. Bridge. Whatever you want. Can it wait? It's drop time. Uh, that's actually what I was calling about, Commander. Drop time. I have some questions about it. Well, did you watch the orientation video? I watched... An orientation video. Then you know as much as I do. Well, glad we could clear that up. Enjoy your drop time. Woo! Wait, wait, wait. I wanted to know if you had any more information about this algorithm. I wanted to know how it works. Do you think I can take a look at the code? I guess you could ask Pythagoras Bot to let you give it a read through. He might be kind of weird about it, though. Well, he'll definitely be weird about it. He's weird about everything, but you know what I mean. Oh, there's actually a Pythagoras bot involved? I thought it was just a visual metaphor. Oh no, he's as real as radium pops. He's the one who calls in from Timekeeping Central to let us know when the party's about to start. Timekeeping Central? We have a Timekeeping Central. What do they do? Keeping track of the algorithm, mostly. I'm not sure what their original remit was, but... Remember, the fairgrounds was intended to be a major center for diplomacy and interstellar trade, so I guess the designers anticipated a lot of... time-related disputes? Ugh. Who knows what those nulls were thinking. But yeah, nowadays, TC just lets us know when the algorithm says it's time for the drop! So that's where I can get a look at the algorithm at Timekeeping Central? I assume so. I've never seen it. Aren't you even a little bit curious? This algorithm regularly brings everything on your station to a screaming halt, and you don't want to know how it works? I know it does work, which is more than you can say for most things around here. Point taken. Anyway, if you want someone who understands the algorithm, Pythagoras Bot would be your best bet. Your only bet, really. TC doesn't have any other crew. I'm sure he'll be happy to explain it to you. I get the feeling they don't see too many visitors. He tends to ramble on the phone, but yeah... Timekeeping Central. Ask for Pythagoras Bot. Wait, if he's the only one there, why do I have to ask for it? Oh, right. Uh, there was some kind of jack-up during the retrofitting process with his friend, Bill. Phil? Philalaeus Bot? Is some sort of disciple? They argue it passes the time, I guess. Anyway, Phil's original body was a total loss, so they slotted his memory in with Pythagoras Bot until a new body could be requisitioned, and, well, you've seen how efficient the requisition process is around here. But don't mention it when you meet them. There's a firewall between the two personalities, so they don't know they're sharing a body. Okay, fine. So where can I find this timekeeping central? No clue. Let me take a look at the station directory. Huh. Huh. Uh-huh. Well. 
That's odd. HF, where even are we? This is still the fairgrounds, right? Of course it is. Only way off of here is through an airlock. Although there was a station cult a while back that thought if you started at the right time, you could walk here to Earth in under a year. Something about how if you can see the doors, you can walk through them. So the trick is seeing them. <laughs> Crazy stuff, of course. I went looking for their headquarters once, see if we could get a debate going. <laughs> how did that go? But they were no match for you. I never went anywhere. I couldn't find them. They were gone. Packed heavy, took everything that might have given me a clue. Empty quarters, no forwarding. I did get a postcard from one later, though. She seemed nice. Huh. So, where are we right now? I don't see any deck orientation codes on the panels here. You know, it takes most people years to catch on about the codes. Good for you. As for where we are, well, people forget how big the fairgrounds is. Most of the sectors were assembled individually and then drawn in around the central stanchion with cables tethered together and finally ratcheted onto the central spindle. Otherwise, the center of mass would be constantly shifting and for a lot of reasons, it's better to keep the whole system in a state where it can't wobble. Wobble ruins your day when you're building. We hate wobble. We do. Wobble is nobody's friend. But when you're working that way, you can't just butt the sectors right up against one another. So you've got to leave room for all the schnes you're using in the assembly process. So all that cable for the tethering and winching, where did it go? It didn't? Exactly. It's still right here in the spaces between. Along with a mess of intersector conduits, some of them empty, some of them carrying the fuel and water and oxygen and pineapple juice that keeps us all alive. And besides all that, when you're putting together a space station, you need a lot of maintenance space, storage space, machine space, and you need it usable before the station itself goes online. Between some decks, you could almost park a cruise liner. Well, not a cruise liner, but a sharp ship at least. So after everything's assembled, you just leave all that temp space as is. No reason to waste energy on clearing it out. There's a whole other world back here, hidden behind the bulkheads. Between sectors? <laughs> I had no idea. And all these people live here? If you're the kind of sapient who's looking to get even farther away from it all than the fairgrounds already is, this is where you go. Usually these folks keep to their own, but even they know when it's drop time. We'll be welcome as long as we don't try to push them around. See? Wave at that guy. He's looking at you. Go ahead. Open your eyes. He's just staring harder. Oh! oh! He waved back! You're as strange to him as he is to you. Except you're dressed. Ah, here we are. First stop on our tour. Bridge Park. <laughs> you're gonna love this. This is incredible! How? They set up spin conductors to keep the water gripped to the chamber walls. This started out as a reservoir, so it was already prepped for huge masses of liquid. Then they anchored the park in the middle like a suspension bridge. It just spans around itself. The watercolor show is, uh, let me check. Yeah, rehearsal. But these folks are a water dance company. They have tinted bleed lights strapped to their suits, and the, uh, the music is timed to the colors. The floodlights shine up through the water, which is why the colors look like that. Amazing. Love these things. So beautiful. What's that thing for? Looks like a tube of smoke. That, D, is a visible compact high point. We can step in if you want, but brace yourself. Let's go. <laughs> Whoa! That was a doozy. Whee! <laughs> you okay there, Dean? Absolutely. What's next? I want to see everything. Okay then. Timekeeping Central. A whole department that I've never seen, hell, never even heard of. I guess they don't get any trouble with drinks machines, windows, or very small wires. Well, if the staff is only one or possibly two robots, the drinks machine thing makes sense. What doesn't make any flooding sense is that their location has completely vanished from the station records. 
And now I don't get to have a birthday because two robots, or possibly one, in some undisclosed location, have an algorithm that says it's time to throw all our calendars down the disposal chute. Because the fairgrounds. And now I'm walking around in circles again in the vague hope that I'll see something, somewhere, that might give me some kind of a clue because of a vague hint from a possibly omniscient but definitely annoying energy cloud. When the time comes, you'll find your way right in front of you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Frawl. Super helpful. Wheels within we- Ah! Oh, again? Please tell me this isn't the coffee they were not drinking earlier. Not twice in one day. <laughs> yep, sure smells like it. Thanks, Lieutenant. <sighs> I have to say, it does have the aroma of a pretty solid brew. Alright, that's it. I give up. I give up! I'm just going to lie here in the corridor, soaking in cold coffee until I can think of something marginally less pointless that I could be doing with my time. With my drop time. Woo. Okay, no I'm not. Something's poking me in the back. Ow. What is that? Some kind of ring in the floor? An access panel? Doesn't look anything like a standard hatchway. Ugh. Right. Weird secret hatch. With a ladder. Leading somewhere toward the core. Looks clean, at least. Well lit. Oh, and a sign with an arrow. Timekeeping Central. Of course. How else would I find it? Hang on, is the, is the sign... Is that written in crayon? Well, that's super reassuring. Hey, Frawl, if you're listening, next time you want to make me look at the floor, I'd appreciate it if you figured out a method that doesn't leave me wandering around in a coffee-soaked coverall with a bruised butt. Ugh. So this is a low-grab area, right? The section walls house boosters for the gravity field lines that run through the station decks. So a lot of the work they do here is based on bleeding a little surplus out of the grav lines and using it in different ways. That's... What are they doing? When they fly like that, does that make the sound? Yeah, those big bony shells circling their wrists and ankles are called grav bats. The air pulses through a set of intakes at the top, and that's where the sound comes from. Pitch is controlled by speed. Grav bats are fossils, pretty rare. When they were alive, we think they were like organic jet engines, pulling in air and then somehow pulsing it out with bursts of power. Maybe they had a combustible atmosphere or something. Or maybe they collected pockets of gas they could ignite for thrust. The dancers are so limber. I like how they trail those colored powders behind. Oh, oh, that woman just lit hers on fire! <laughs> it's like a one-line firework! Why do they call them grav bats, though? Watch her accelerate. She's nearly at speed. When she... Yes! There it is! Wings! Bat wings open up! Colored light bat wings! Incredible! Oh, look over there. These folks are my favorite. See the tech crafters in the gray jumpsuits setting up the psychic bubble generator? They're the quantum reconstructionists. What they do, you won't believe it. It doesn't look like much. I mean, after a multicolored bat woman flapping around. <laughs> no, they're not exactly performers. More like installation artists, I guess you'd call it. See, another little side benefit of drop time is that it makes intellectual property laws unenforceable. The quantum reconstructionists take advantage of that to publicly recreate great lost or maimed works of art from the past and then share them through psychic projection. Inside that bubble, you'll experience whole worlds of lost art from the pre-yawn era beamed directly into your brain. Dozens of lost artworks, paintings, poems, plays, movies, songs, all brought back to life just for drop time. What, so it's a suspension field thing? Or do they use some kind of AI? Nah, they're not committing AI rights violations. <laughs> like I said, these folks are good people. And even if they weren't, drop time immunity only goes so far. No, what they use is old-fashioned programming and compiling. 
plus their own skills, intellect, and empathy as craft beings to take whatever scraps of a lost work still exist, photos, scripts, descriptions, reviews, and supplement the computer's output with their own artistic sensibilities. It's only an approximation, sure, but there's been a handful of times they recreated something that actually turned up later on, and the copies were all at least 88% faithful to the original, so they're pretty on the ball. There we go. Bubbles on. What? We just walk in? In and out. Just a second, but oh boy. What a second. <gasps> wow. I mean... <sighs> wow. That was... Oh, my pilgrim soul. I hope I remember all that. Oh, they beam it pretty deep into your hippocampus. It'll stick with you. I've experienced some of those before. They always bring back some of the greatest hits, but I gotta say, it still gets to me. Man, that magnificent Ambersons was something else, wasn't it? There was a new Murnau in there, too. Oh, yes. And the music. Sibelius, Joplin, Prince, Vortslummer. <laughs> I have to teach some of these tunes to Stops. It'll blow his dudo cerebrum. And just don't do any of them in public once we're back in RT. Even if the art doesn't technically exist, someone's figured out a way to own a piece of it somehow. That's why the Reconstructionists only do this during drop time. Oh, the paintings. All those klimts. And that mural by Ferrecto Fantco Quanis. Oh, I had a book of his paintings back on Tammuz growing up, but I had no idea how different it would be in person. And one that doesn't even exist anymore. I'm not usually big on classical drama, but they do something with the history of Cardenio that really makes it special. Thank you, HF. Really. This is... I had no idea any of this was going on. I didn't want you to think drop time was nothing but credit and blip scams, butt-naked DeLoreans, and pointless slacking off. Not to mention that smart-head boss of yours jerking you around. I've done enough of these to know that under all the dangerous, ridiculous, and downright stupid chaos of the fairgrounds, there's a whole nother kind of really beautiful chaos going on. I really appreciate it. But right now, I am starving. <laughs> no kidding. We just did a week's worth of museum hopping in a few seconds. We both need a serious refuel. And I know just the spot. Back in the clean world at the bottom of Tzadzik, there's a place that builds fully functional animals out of plants. They walk around, but they're not alive. It's just a nerve arc. There's no actual sentience. Cuts the build to harvest cycle to a couple of days. On RT, we couldn't afford to get near it, but in drop time, they're open to everyone, which is perfect for us. It won't be crowded because it's so expensive, most people don't even know it exists. The owners don't advertise because they don't want to make people feel bad that they can't afford it. I got to know about it when I did some work on their protein anticipators. Ooh, this is magical, HF. I had no idea there was anything like this around us this whole time. Hey, you said RT before? What's that? Regular time. I think of this like the circus. I mean, the way we live, that's a circus. <laughs> but this, this is the real circus. Kind kids run away to join. I can't tell you how much I needed this. Okay, let's go murder some veggie cows. Right this way. No making fun of the worshippers, though. Worshippers? Any believer who ever had a dietary restriction is all over this place the minute drop time sounds. The beef isn't beef. The pork isn't pork. The balamos aren't balamos. But they taste like they might be. It's heaven. Paradise. Nirvana. Aren't you an atheist? Hey, English has only so many words to describe a transcendent experience. And most of them got religion stuck to them like skinny on a xanthony. Like the recreation director bot always says, language is a virus. Oh, I think that I will never see a biped who can stand. A bird who really knows the sky. A beach with sticky sand. A station that can last through time as sturdy as a tree. They all will crash, 
or fall, or drown, and who will crush them? Me! Oh, oh dear, that's a good one, isn't it? I'll keep that one for my memoirs. Litter detected. Do not litter. Attention. Do not litter. Disposable waste has been detected in the corridor. Why does this sort of thing always happen to me? Look, this is not a good time. I am shedding. It's a private and personal time for a pulmonary of a certain age. Yes, some leaves will fall while I'm shedding. Don't think that I don't know about it. Don't think I wouldn't stop it if I could. They're my leaves. They're falling off me! Don't you just leave me alone! You! You don't stop! You! Censor! You leave me alone! It's drop time! Smart move, light switch. Hi. Hello? Excuse me. Hi. Oh. Hello. I didn't need to see you come in. I was distracted. Repainting the mural. Again. Repainting? Now that's a work in progress, isn't it? Oh, thanks. Yeah. I'm no Ferecto Fanquoquanus, but I think it's coming along nicely. Although it would go a lot faster if someone didn't keep putting the earth in the middle where he knows perfectly well it shouldn't go. The fire that goes in the middle. By now I thought we would have worked it out, but old notions die hard with some people. Fire here, earth here, counter-earth here. Oh, you're human, aren't you? I must apologize for the smell. We've put in a cleaning ticket, but, well, given the times we're living in, I'm not holding my breath. Although you probably should. Sorry. Uh, it's fine? I'm covered in coffee anyway. It's hard to smell anything else. Maybe there's a hint of Thai food. Really? I'd expect you to be running out of here like you just got an eye full of Il Toria. We had an experiment that got a little spilly, you see. After effects. Unless... Oh, of course. I thought it was suspicious that he got such a good deal on putrescine lubricant. Mr. Bargain Hunter strikes again. Just wait until I tell him. Okay. A uh, quick question. Are you Pythagoras Bot? What? Do I look like Pythagoras Bot? I'm not sure how to answer that. Here, look at our portraits. That's Pythagoras on that side of the mural. And there, on the other side, is me, Philalais. Uh, and the picture in the middle? What picture in the middle? This one is him, that's me. Okay, why don't we just... All right, yes, yes, I know. I could have just said he's the pretty one, but I'm the one with the thinkos in the brainos, if you know what I mean. Still, I sometimes wish I had his looks. That profile... Dreamy, isn't it? Okay, right. I see. Well, I'm sure when people get to know you... Exactly. Uh... Exactly. I knew you'd get it. Because you and I are in the same boat, aren't we? Sure. Uh, wait, what? Oh, look! Here's Pythagoras bot now. Hey, Pete! Yes, over here! This woeful creature wants to talk to you about something. Oof. Oh, dear, dear... Hello, I'm, I'm Pythagoras, but I, I am so sorry. But, well, maybe you'll grow out of it. And I am sure you have a beautiful soul somewhere. Uh-huh. And you're the... The pretty one, yes. It's not fair to Phil, I know. And we spend so much time together. Yeah, I feel sometimes as if I'm taunting him, but the union of unlike spirits brings us justice... And harmony. So it is best this way for us both. And perhaps one day, well, he'll learn to be less ugly. I, I keep leading by example. I was going to say you're the timekeeper. Oh, yes, I am. But 
Well, Phil helps out, you know, <laughs> as best he can. Standing right here. You're a great team, obviously. Uh, can I ask you a couple questions? Of course, of course. But don't ask him anything technical. He'll just start in with up and down and the round power and it's all so mystical. He has no idea how it works. He just does it by guessing. Oh, well, basically I was interested in drop time and the algorithm. Oh, yeah. How it works, mm -hmm. how it was developed, the principles behind it, that kind of thing. Well, drop time. Now that's almost, almost more of an art than a science. Though, of course, I, well, the two are intimately related through the reach of mathematics. I mean, look at this place, for example. Right, that time extends up and down into the reaches of the world, channeling and threading the powers, tuning them into mystery. Just well, this, this shaft alone, as it twists so perfectly into the infinite, feel its pulses of seeking and solving. Feel the intervals, the roundness of the power, the octave, the fourth, the fifth, all of the mysteries of the world trapped here to entrance our soul. Okay. Told you. Did I tell you? Yes, I did. I told you. That was very, uh, profound, but could you maybe go into more detail about the specifics? Like, how do you know when to start drop time and when it should end? Because that wasn't exactly clear in your otherwise incredibly helpful explanation of the algorithm. Well, the algorithm is a great enigma wrapped up in a riddle with chips, eaten by the hunters of demons. With chips? Deeply inscrutable chips. So like memory chips or mm -hmm. uh, deep fried potatoes? Well, the latter, but mysterious and consumed by the hunters of demons. I'm not really... Maybe I wasn't clear. How does the algorithm actually determine when drop time starts and ends? How do you calculate that? <laughs> well, yeah. I, well, calculate? You, you just have to feel it. We don't make that decision. We accept it. We channel it. We facilitate it. That's a good word, facilitate. We don't start drop time. It is drop time. It's time for drop time. And the algorithm tells us so. And where do the chips come into it? I like chips. Hey, oh, oh, we could go get some. I probably just ate. But uh, what are the, uh, I, I mean, how do you get that feeling? And how does the algorithm tell you that it's time for drop time? And why doesn't it work on regular intervals? Wouldn't it be more efficient to plan ahead, make announcements, figure out ways to make up for the days we're skipping? <laughs> well, you Phil is always going on about that. You, one time, I let him try it, and we won't be doing that again. Because the algorithm knows best. I still think it was a valiant attempt. Everyone got so much sleep, and the beards were marvelous. But it certainly didn't make us very popular. Yeah, it took ages to fix up the power after that incident. Nothing felt right. We Oh, we had a long, dry spell before the portents got portending again. Okay, how about this? Walk me through a typical day here in Timekeeping Central. You power up, maybe top off your oil reservoir, and then what? You check in with the algorithm to find out if it's drop time? <laughs> yes! We feel the ancient spirit of the algorithm permeating our beings, and it speaks to us of drop time, of the beginning, the middle, and the end, in the language of the spheres, or possibly through the mouth of a flying vole. It speaks, saying, it is time. Also, we have the box. 
Right, the box. We, we also have the box. The box? The algorithm box. Here, shh, see? There, there's this little window and a button. And when the button turns yellow, we start drop time. In an hour. An hour after the button turns yellow. An hour. Well, we have to get ready. It's, but yeah, it's mostly just us up here. And we don't have a lot of guests. So, you know, I gotta comb my hair, trim the beard, things like that. He doesn't wear pants. Don't... Uh, that, that is none of his business. Why would, you, why would you tell a stranger that? You don't. I think it's gross. Did I take a look at that real quick? Okay, there's a panel on the back, and of course it's locked. Let's... Alright, that's a tiny mechanism, too small for the Framistrat tracer line. Oh wait, where's that data pin I found? Yeah, that fits, oh, and... Oh, oh, oh. Opens it? Huh, good thing I landed on this the first time I fell in one of Frawl's coffee puddle... Oh, thanks, Frawl. Alright, let's see what we got in here. Oh, you opened the algorithm box? I, I don't know how I feel about that. The last person I knew who opened a box caused quite the kerfuffle. Just let him look, you snake biter. This is an actual scientific inquiry, and I'm super into it. But, but what if he should interfere with the algorithm? How will we mark the end of drop time? Drop time is over when we say it is. Back in 19, you didn't notice the light had gone off for three whole days, and no one knew the difference. Now shush. It's, uh, there's a screen here. <sighs> wow, this thing is a dust monster. Okay, little label says affixed to power source, batteries not included. No help there. Let's try booting it up. Ah! Earth Ent Little App Fun Box Light. Menu? Error. When light is flashing yellow, press to reset. Okay. Reset. Oh, yeah, ah! Shush it! Only one choice. Set SRAND X. For best results, X must be greater than 1. Last X value. 1. Figures. Okay, X equals 23. Set. And now, here we go. Generating random number. 5. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the light turns yellow. I hate the sign of drop time! Of course, we use our judgment if it's too close to the last one. Has to be at least a month or so. We need to build some suspense. This is the algorithm? This is a child's toy. Well, yes, but children of all ages, it says so on, on the bottom. It's, it, uh, on it's a random number generator. And it was set wrong. Well, yes and no. It is the algorithm. Its ways are unknowable. Except no, because now I know them, and it's just a random number generator. Is it though? Yes! I, I, I'm afraid you still don't see my human friend. We tried so many ways to fix time in the beginning. We applied every scrap of our considerable knowledge and ancient wisdom to this question. But no matter how complex and beautiful our calculations, no matter how punctiliously orderly our temporal schemes, they always ended the same way. With a pack of lathered up bean eaters pounding on our doors, screaming that we had made a mess of everything. It got so bad, we had to erase Timekeeping Central from all the station maps just to get a moment's peace. And then we discovered the algorithm. It's the only thing that works. And we haven't had a single complaint since. I... I guess I can't argue with success. It's just... It really is for the best. You're not going to go spilling the, uh, you know what's, are you? I shudder to think what might happen if people lose faith in the algorithm. No, no, I don't want to make trouble. Everyone but me is perfectly happy with drop time. I'm not going to be the jerk that ruins it. Wonderful! And, ooh, feel free to come back and visit us. Anytime. Bring up to 
Seven of your friends. Sure. Oh, uh, hang on. I had one more question. This box? The algorithm. Fine. The algorithm, okay? It decides when we go into drop time and when we come out. I get that part, yep. but how do you decide what day it is when we come back? Ah. That's, uh, hmm. Well. We tried everything. Uh, we really did. And? You see that calendar on the wall there? Yeah, it looks kind of beat up. How long have you had... Uh, are those dart holes? Hello, friend John! And a most joyous drop time to you! This is the first drop time friend John has experienced, is it not? Other is certain that friend John has been looking forward at it with much anticipation! Anticipation? Yes! Drop time is so thoroughly and delightfully explained in the packet of orientation that Alvar was fortified with many, many plans for the exciting activities he wished to pursue during his first drop time. Surely French John has enjoyed many new experiences also! I don't know about enjoying, but it was certainly something new. Then perhaps Alvar may assist Ferenc John in choosing different activities for your next wakefulness cycle to increase the enjoyment. Alvar has a most comprehensive list. Oh yeah, sure. Activities. Sounds great. Alvar is sensing a discrepancy between tone and content. Was that statement of Ferenc John intended to be Ferris? Eh, it's fine. I'm fine. I mean, what's a birthday anyway? A birthday is a commemoration of the date when a human first commenced their lifespan. But surely friend John is already knowing this. Alvar does not understand the reason for this question. It was a rhetorical question, Althar. Oh. Just a little vaunched because the whole drop time calendar skip, which it turns out is decided by the most idiotically fairgrounds-esque method possible, by the way, means I don't get to have a birthday this year. It's not as though I expected anything big, or anything at all, really, but it was just nice to know I had the option. I mean, I lost everything else with my old life, but at least I still had a birthday. And now the fairgrounds has taken that too, so... It... Hang on, what's all this? Is that a cake? Happy unbirthday, friend John! What? I... Althar, this is amazing, but I have to tell you that an unbirthday isn't really a thing. that was once recommended to Althar as a perfect summary of the methods of human logic used in construction of the fairgrounds. And this book was extraordinarily confusing to Althar, so he is assuming that the recommendation was accurate. And then today, Althar was realizing that this drop time would almost certainly make interference on his plans to perform celebration of the natal day of his dear friend John. So Althar is hoping that the unbirthday is a appropriate substitute. Wow, Althar, this is... this is perfect. Thank you so much. So, did you invite anyone else to the unbirthday party? I was going to do a birthday thing with Stella, so... Ah, Althar was already inviting Supervisor Reyes. She made acceptance, but said she first had some special business to be undertaking, so Althar and friend John should start without her. Oh, but if a piece of cake is not saved for her, Althar and French John will soon be learning firsthand how a sanitation engineer is dealing with a vent biter ambush. While this is piquing the curiosity of Althar, it is probably best that we are not learning the details. Yeah, no, let's set aside half the cake to be sure. Hmm. Do you know what her special business was? Only that she was making investigation of the Pangzilla Vittel Crush that was gifted to the sanitation department, and which French John and Supervisor Reyes did not quite enjoy the previous evening. Uh, I hope that investigation doesn't involve ingestion. That trip to the med center was one of those landmarks I think any relationship has to go through, but I'm not exactly sentimental enough about it that I want to do it again. 
Oh no, Supervisor Vase will certainly not be consuming the Bangzilla further. She was able to perform examination of its ingredients on the contaminant analysis spectrometer of Sanitation Central and found a most disturbing result. The entire case was poisoned. Poisoned? What the hell? Someone tried to kill her? It seems likely that killing was not intended. The poison was indeed disagreeable, but it would have caused a prolonged discomfort only. Supervisor Reyes was most fortunate that you were present to secure medical attention without delay. If the Bangzilla had been consumed in mass at the office party of the Department of Sanitation, it is probable that they would be unable to perform their work duties for approximately 16 weeks. That... That makes no sense. Like, even less sense than everything else around here. Hmm. Who on the fairgrounds would want to take out sanitation for four whole months? They're basically the only ones who keep this place habitable. Hmm. Let us not think of such unpleasantries now, friend John. Uh, it was perhaps all an unfortunate mistake. <laughs> but now it is your very special day, and Alvar has acquired the superior, non-exploding variety of candles for your cake. Make a wish, and then expirate upon them, please, friend John. Happy unbirthday! You've been listening to Life with Althar, episode 16. This episode was written by Linus Gelber for Gemini Collision Works and starred... Barrett Johnson is Althar, John Amir is John B., Ivana Cullinan is Commander Toriana, Alyssa Simon is Lieutenant Commander Prawl, Derek Peterson is Stops, Chris Lee is Chip Frinkle, Zuri Washington is D, Eli Ganeas as HF, and Amanda Lepergola as Mrs. Frontenax, and also featured Linus Gelber, Philip Cruz, Ian W. Hill, Anna Stefanik, Olivia Baseman, and Clara Francesca. Life with Althar was created by Barrett Johnson and Ian W. Hill. Barrett is the supervising producer, showrunner, and script supervisor. Ian is the audio producer, sound designer, and technical supervisor. The writer's room consists of Barrett, Ian, John, Amanda, Chris, Philip, Lex, and Linus. Theme and interstitial music composed and performed by Anna Stefanik. Life with Althar logo and illustration by Dean Haspiel. Library music and sound effects licensed from Storyblocks. The entire production is copyright 2020 Gemini Collision Works. We'll be back in two weeks, or the drop time equivalent. But first, what's our friend Mrs. Frontenac up to all the way down in Ion 53? 31718-19192. Eight seven four seven one one nine one nine two eight seven four. Oh, Thrab, and I did that one already. If you're listening, oops, I'm going to start again at the top. You are listening, aren't you? I hate doing these. Can't somebody else do these? I should have an assistant or something by now. If only those trash demons could read, I could reprogram one of them to do it. Fine. Fine, yes, all right. Three, one, seven, one, eight. Nine, one, nine, two, eight, seven. Wait. Wait, that one is only four. Oh. Oh, I missed the one. We'll just add the one back in there. Before the nine. No, not the second nine, the first. Not the top, I'm serious now. Get your pens ready. Or pencils. DIY pencils are fine as long as you made them from your own wood. Don't waste someone else's wood just to make a pencil. You don't know what they might need it for. Use your own. Or get a plastic one. Three, one... Oh, wait! Wait, wait, I... I wasn't ready. Okay, some water in my pot. Good. Let's go. Three one seven one eight one nine one nine two eight seven four seven one zero four nine five two zero two 
I hate this. Look, the stupid plan didn't work. It got screwed up. They barely drank any of it. If you have any questions, just call me. For God's sake. Litter detected. Do not litter. Attention. Do not litter. Oh, hello, dearie. Just what I needed. Don't you move now. I've got a little job for you. Escalating. <laughs> <laughs>